Welcome to the Outside the Business Boxes podcast, where we're talking about how to ignite your business today for the future using systems for everything you do in your business to make your life, your employees' lives, and your customers' lives easier for you to ultimately enjoy your business and, of course, make more money. I'm your host, Chad Murray. Thank you to come to the Outside the Business Box podcast. Listen at your own risk. Just go get yourself in trouble is my model. This is Chad Murray. And thank you for, for coming in and listening to me. Um, I know I'm a little bit of a mumbler stumbler, and I know it can be hard to listen to me sometimes, but I guess the message is good enough to, to attract you. So here we go. I have stumbled upon the secret sauce for employees. You don't just work on techniques and items to sell and how to do the work. You got to build the person. Now, what does that mean? And we've talked about it here recently in the podcast, intentional culture building. And really, it's got to start with you. So starting with you, what kind of leader are you? I mean, look back and what are you? Are you Are you leading your team or are you a technician trying to manage your company? Which is it? Uh, And at some point in time, you're going to need to start leading all aspects, not just the technical side of everything. So when you're building a business and a culture, I've learned that if you don't put something outside of the technical side of what you're doing and start speaking to their soul, not their mind. You'll start breeding this culture of your business to where they want to work for you. They never want to leave. They want to do more for you. You've all most likely heard my podcast here in the last month of how we you know, did better last year, and, and I attribute it, attribute it, you know, to my management, Cody especially, John, Brian, all these guys, Gina, and getting us there. But I also intentionally worked on culture. I intentionally sent them videos. I intentionally said, pick a video every week. I sent them four videos, or sending in, was sending them four videos a week before we start getting slamming busy in the fall, I said, pick one that speaks to your team and discuss it in a meeting. And I'm telling you, people that come to work can be transformed into that inspirational, like, I want to come to work. And unless you have intentionally start working on it, you might be sitting there thinking, what's this guy talking about? Or, yeah, I don't have time for that. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I was kind of that guy. I was that guy. You know, not since I became a business coach, but I knew something in my business through COVID, and I had other times, uh, 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 other segments of our growth of our business to where we're just constantly hiring and firing and training And there never seems to be a big stick where someone, you know, is there in in my sales division, my educator division. We've got we've got a pretty good core of leaders in our production, which is why we can do so much production wise. But when it comes to the sales, we just I'm just seemingly hiring new sales guys, educators, inspectors, sweeps, as you if you will. All the time. If you're not in the the sweeping business and you're not a chimney company and you're just a a plumber or an electrician, you know, which you guys are a little bit more specified in what you're doing. But if you're going through workers or apprentices to, to get the job done, it's not just about electricity and plumbing. And that's what I'm here to talk to you today about. So what I'm going to I'm going to play you a little video. And it's a 17-minute video, which we're, we're going to chop it up, and then we're going to talk. And you're going to feel 
very motivated. I promise you, you're going to feel like, wow, here in a little bit. So here we go. You know, if you study people who are at the pinnacle of anything, you recognize that to get there, motivation was maybe 1% of the formula. Maybe. 1%. And I'll prove it to you. If you want to become a world-class bodybuilder, say an IFBB pro, what that takes is you have to train twice a day, six days a week. You have to have eight meals a day. Your calorie intake is regimented. Your meals are pre-planned and pre-cooked. You don't eat according to taste. You eat according to function. So my trainer, for instance, will eat and I'm going, what are you eating? And he's having the most, he'll have chicken that was boiled without salt. And he'll have like half a kilo of it. I mean, what are you doing? He says, I'm taking in protein. He doesn't say I'm eating. He says, I'm taking in protein. For him, it's functional. It's not taste-based. Then, you would probably have to train for a minimum. And this is if you are a genetic phenom. You'd have to train for a minimum of 10 years before you could get on a stage and compete at an average level with an average global bodybuilder. Average. Okay. So why am I, why am I telling you this? All, all of us here, at the beginning of a new year, write these things called New Year's resolutions. And then it, you, you know, you, New Year's resolutions, number one, make more money. Yeah? Uh, number two, uh, change my boyfriend. Number three, get into shape. Yeah? Number three, get into shape is somewhere in the top three. So what do you do? You go to the gym, you get a gym membership. Yeah? You buy... You go to the local uh, Nike store and you buy like all of your gym gear. You are motivated. You are inspired. You are going to the damn gym. You go to YouTube, you subscribe to all of the fitness channels. You go to your Instagram, you follow all of the fitness models. You are motivated. You are going to the damn gym. You're going to get in shape. That's what you're going to do. The people you're following on YouTube have been working on for a minimum of five years to look like that. So you have the incorrect understanding that after a month of working out, you're going to look like them. So what happens in the first month? You're excited. You go to gym every single month. You know, and you take the pains and your body is sore. But, you know, I'm excited. I'm going to gym. Then life happens. Company doesn't make money. You don't make your targets. You fall a bit ill. Something happens. And all of a sudden, you stop going to gym for a day. A day becomes two. Two becomes a week. Now, all of a sudden, you've had a gym membership for three months and you haven't been in that time. What did, what did you miss? You thought motivation was the formula. Winners don't need motivation. Winners need discipline. Discipline's about getting it done because it needs to get done, not because I feel like it, not because I'm motivated for it. You think Nelson Mandela was motivated to spend 27 years in prison? <laughs> you think Martin Luther King was motivated to march across the states and proclaim freedom? You think, you know, if you look at people that change the world, they're not doing it because they're motivated. They're doing it because they made a commitment to do it and they disciplined to see it through. Discipline is far more important than motivation, which is why you've got to be careful the decisions you make. Because once you make the decision, you have to see that decision through. Like my mentor says, first we make the decisions, then the decisions make us. So you've got to be very careful the decisions you make. Be very careful the commitments you make. Motivation, I'm telling you now, is completely overrated. It's important. Don't get me wrong. You know, we meet according to motivation. We feel good. Rah, rah. But that'll fade. You need a stronger will and a deeper commitment to see things through. Yeah, wow, huh? So, I mean, I mean, my first take on listening to that was, yeah, you're not going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, by going to the gym after two months. It takes discipline. So as I'm coaching people, I'm talking to business owners, and a lot of the time I hear that they're so wound up in their business that they either need motivation or they need to see the light of how to figure out to do it. How do I work on my business intentionally and what do I work on and how do I work on it? The easiest tip for me to tell without without knowing you and your business or if, or if you are one of my clients, you probably noticed what I did when I first started working with you is... 
the first thing I'm going to ask you is to be disciplined to show up and be disciplined to get the homework done. And when you're intentionally working on your business and you're trying to change the business to a better functioning or whatever you want, you have to intentionally be disciplined to do the work. Now, what does that really mean? That means more than likely, if you're under three to four, five trucks, and you are a truck, you're going to have to be disciplined to give up your truck and manage your people. You're going to have to be disciplined on taking whatever system you're working on and perfect it and then follow up on it. And it's perfected by everybody else until it becomes a habit with everybody else. You do not go to the next system because if you're going to work a month on a system, debut it, expect everyone to do it, and then six months later you're going, hey, how's this going or why aren't we doing this? Well, the failure there was not the system, was not even your people. It was you. You didn't stay disciplined enough to make sure they're doing it. And so if you are one of these guys that's trying to get out of your truck and trying to intentionally work on your business, I got bad news for you. You're going to have to work a lot of extra hours, but I promise you this. It's quick when you have the discipline to intentionally work on the business, to mentor and build leaders in your business and intentionally give them the correct training, the follow-up training, the everything that they're doing wrong training. It's easy to sit there and say, why aren't they doing it? Why? It's them, it's them, it's them. I hate to tech break the bad news to you. It's not them. It's you. You're not giving enough into them. Now, I'm not, there are those things where you just, you might have a, some bad employees but if you don't and you're having the good guys continually doing the headache stuff well that's your fault you know it so what do you do it's time to buckle up it's time to be disciplined i am going to work on my business every monday night after i put the kids to bed or my wife does i'm going to work two hours from nine to eleven Every Thursday night, I'm going to do the same thing. And every Sunday, when my wife's making dinner and I'm watching football, well, I'm going to put the TV remote down and I'm not going to watch that football game. I'm going to intentionally work on my business. Sacrifice. Now, it's kind of cool that we just brought the football thing up and that was not intentional. It just came out of my mind. But if you did watch the, the games this weekend and that big... I well Kansas City against um the Bills and the overtime and all the debate out there about that is regardless especially if you're listening to this a year later after the playoffs you're like what is he talking about greatest great one of the greatest last 3 minutes of football ever <sighs> but in the news conference afterwards they asked Andy Reid the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs what did you say to Mah- to Mahomes McCombs to get him in that last 13 seconds, 17 seconds, you know, that inspired him to do whatever. And he said something to the fact of it looks grim. And, and, uh, that's what Mahomes said to him. And he said, well, when it's grim, be the grim reaper and go get it. <laughs> be the Grim, Grim Reaper and go get it. What a, I mean, you want to talk about coaching. What a phenomenal, like, holy shit that he just put something in his soul. Which is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Working on your business is, is systems, but you're trying to get into your employees' souls. You're trying to get them... At 17 seconds left at the day to go out and win. 
to be your business. In my case, a master services chimney guy, a chimney girl, chimneys, we're chimneys. If you're a plumber, we're plumbers, we're, we're A1 plumbing or whatever, you know, it matters. And so, as you sit here and we're going to be building your business and you're intentionally doing it, it starts with discipline, okay? So, here's some leadership tips on discipline. Kind of the 10 things that you need to, you know, the great leaders can do. Well, you always stay positive, upbeat, even when things are tough. Even when you know that employee is being difficult. You got to stay positive. Stay upbeat. Leaders don't make excuses. They take responsibility for their actions. That's right now. With the discipline, you got to take responsibility. Okay? Leaders communicate openly and honestly with their team. All right? If some guy is not performing correctly and you're babysitting him, you got to talk to him and you got to tell him your sales suck. You got to bring it out. Now, you don't have to say suck. We're saying positive. But you got to say, listen, this, this, this isn't what I, you know, what I expect out of you. I expect this. You got to have that fierce conversation at times. Just training somebody to do the job isn't what you isn't the end all of the job. The job is inspiring them to be disciplined to do their job and to get the numbers that you require. Might take a fierce conversation. You know what else? Leaders never give up. You just don't give up on your company and your cause. You might give up on a, someone because you got to fire them because they're not right. Okay, that's fine. That ain't giving up. That's forging forward. You know, but you know, I hear a lot about from my clients, especially newer clients. And then when I talk to other business owners that I don't work with, how they're always talking about how they, they know and they feel that they don't get everything. They don't get a hundred percent out of their, out of their crews or their salespeople, you know? And one of the things I, I would always ask, well, what are you doing to help them? Are you inspiring them to do their best? Or are you just telling them what they did wrong and then trying to correct them? If you're not inspiring them as you're doing all this, being positive, you're not making excuses, you're communicating openly and honestly, and you're not giving up on them, if they're the right people, well, you got to inspire them to do the best work. The team comes first, and you're the team leader. So... <laughs> that really is what sums up of what you need to do with your business when it comes to the best things in leadership. Now, that was five. I'm going to go over the next five after I play a little bit more of this video. So I'm going to let you listen to this and we'll continue and I'll see you on the flip side. One of my key phrases for the whole day, disciplines work miracles. Disciplines work miracles and here's the first piece that works miracles number one do what you can do not let neglect grab you by the throat don't let neglect stall you on your path toward prosperity and health being able to become powerful influential rich beyond wildest imagination don't neglect what you can do if you can read, read. If you can change, change. If you can grow, grow. If you can take one step, take one step. Do not neglect to do whatever you can do at the moment. Of course, you can't run a multi-billion dollar business today. Mark couldn't either 10 years ago. Mark couldn't either five years ago. But I'm telling you, today he can do it because step by step, year by year, he took on what he could do. He didn't neglect it. He did the meetings he could do. He made the calls he could make. He read the books he could read. He took the classes he could take. 
and step by step he got himself ready i'm telling you do not neglect to do whatever you can do because it'll work miracles of personal development first productivity second now do what you can here's number two do the best you can if it's a foggy night and you can only see 100 feet how can you see another 100 feet answer walk the first 100 feet Walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. And walk as far as you can see, and then you can see some more. So what you've picked up here, just do it as far as you can see it. And I promise you, if you'll execute as far as you can see it, you'll be able to see more. Do that, then you can see more. And finally, get in tune of doing the best you can. And you'll have the activity that'll develop the disciplines that will set this sail so that you can say it doesn't matter how the wind blows. I'm prepared. Life happens. So discipline has got to prevail because you're going to also be dragged into your business. You're going to be dragged over to, to a complaint. You're going to be dragged into letting someone go. You're going to be dragged into someone firing. Are you firing someone or someone quitting? And you're going to be dragged back into the business. So, I mean... We have to then start planning intentionally to where the company is getting built to where you're never dragged into these scenarios. You know how I love, you know, how do you start? Just do it is walk 100 feet. Then how do you go from there? How do you see the next 100 feet? You walk the first 100 feet. And then you walk another 100 feet to see the next 100 feet. Or if you can't see the 100 feet, you just got to do it. You can see more if you just do it intentionally. Be the discipline that you need to be. Life is going to happen. Business is going to do everything it can to stop you. And it's hard. It is going to throw you in a tailspin. It's going to... It's going to try to stomp on you. It's going to try to take your money. It's going to try to get your employees against you. It's going to have customers thrown at you, upset. It's going to do all these ugly things, and you're just going to handle it. But what happens when you know how to handle it and fix it and intentionally start building the culture of discipline? Aha, see where I'm going with this? Culture of discipline. What is that? Well, that's not... That's, that's, let's not talk about what it's not. Let's talk about what it is. What is the culture of discipline? The culture of discipline is my people, when I say I want you to go do something and I deliver the right message to how to do it, guess what? They do it. And then I ask them to continue to do it, and they do it. Most of the time, I'm not going to lie. It's a work in process. Business is a living thing. But you know what? Just like it said there, I don't give up. You know, our first five rules is I don't give up. I never give up. I never throw the towel in and just go, whatever. I always keep going. You know, there's an anxiety to being a business owner. And especially if you own a business that never has ups and downs, well, why in the hell are you listening to my podcast? You're probably not. But if you're like me, you know, I do this podcast as much for me as I do for you guys. You know, I learned a way to actually go find better bullet points for my podcast. So I actually seek out my topics and it gives me bullet points on how to talk about stuff. I know all this stuff, but I intentionally do it. And I look at it and I read it and I study and I and I bring it to you guys every week now leader i'm going to get back into my list so i mean good video the thing the thing is on point discipline motivation how do you get intentionally going right as you just start it and you just do it so more you know 10 great things leaders should do or should be like always look for the silver lining we already talked about staying positive but look for that silver lining okay 
be willing to help others. I know it's hard at times because we're a lot. Well, I hear more business owners, and I am so guilty of this. Why in the hell don't you know this? I'm talking to an employee or talking to a manager. Why didn't you do it like this? Well, maybe they didn't do it like that because I didn't help them and give them the right training to do it properly. That's probably more not or more yes than not. You know, (laughs) here's another thing leaders do. And you're listening to this podcast, so I commend you. You never stop learning. Leaders never stop learning. I mean, Simon Sinek, um, presidents, at least the good ones, they never stop learning. You know, Tony Robbins, I heard he's in a, he's, he has a coach. Well, hell, he's like the number one coach in the world. Yet he listens to someone coach him? <laughs> really? Yes, he does. And it's the old verbiage, you know, Tiger Woods has a swing coach. Jack Nicholas had a swing coach. Did you know comedians don't write most of their jokes? They collaborate with other comedians to come up with their stuff. You know, they help each other. And they keep learning. And lastly, leaders know how to make the tough decisions. That's a good one. The tough decision. What's the elephant in the room that you can't make a decision on? Literally, when we're done with this podcast, think about, there's some homework for y'all. What is the decision you know you have to make and you haven't made it? And you know what the answer is and you know what to do it and it's going to be tough. That's why it's called a tough decision. Well, today, make that decision and act upon it. Be a better business because you just made that decision. You're going to understand that weight has come off of you too. It feels so good to finally make a decision. (laughs) My wife hates to make the decisions. She's just, she preferred me make every decision. And and then, and then be mad at me when I make the wrong one. (laughs) But, you know, she would, she would rather have me make the decisions. And that's fine. That's my wife. You know, of course she makes a ton of decisions, but the tough ones, She likes me to make them. That's okay. But we do it. You know? And when I do make that tough decision, it's so good. And how it feels. Even if I've made the wrong decision, you just live with it. And then you go make another tough decision to reverse it. And you fix it. Right? But that's what leaders do. We don't give up. We make the tough decisions. And so, that, guys is a never-ending scenario. And if you don't incorporate this into your growing business, well, it's going to be harder. Why? Because I hear from every one of my my coaches and my, excuse me, I hear from all of my clients. I hear from my own business. At some point in time, the culture has to shift where culture is easy. We have made that shift at Masters. Have you made that shift? Have you intentionally worked on your culture for through your leadership? Have you intentionally done it? So here I got a little I got a little tip. I, I talked about this on Chat with Chad on Chimney World last week, and I'm gonna I did my experiment and I told everybody at Chat with Chad I'll debut it today um, on my podcast, and it is uh, the profile of what a good salesman is now this isn't you can probably google this stuff but I, I can tell you right now i'm a good salesman my service manager or my, my uh sales man education manager cody Whitwood's a good salesman and our new guy marty is a good salesman so i dissed all of us disc is a is a reactionary personality type test thing and i knew what we would be I did. And sure enough, we were all right what I thought we would do. So now what do we do? Now we intentionally know who to look for. Whoa. Whoa. Big game changer in the industry right there. Who to look for. Not just people that blow your ass away in an interview and then you find out a week later that ain't the person you hired. No. This is the opposite. This is they may not have been that good in the interview or maybe they are. 
but you find out their profile and maybe they're the right fit. And now we can start seeking and pinpointing the right people that will drive our business in education, sales, and estimates, and, 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 uh, and inspections. If you're not in that chimney industry, the same thing. You want, I mean, you want to find a good salesperson? I have the right personality test and profile for you. And let me tell you, I'm telling you, it is foolproof. I'm positive. So my system now at Master Services is that if you are getting hired for this position, you better fit this profile. If not, we're not hiring you. That started this year. I haven't, I haven't proved it to the point of the next hire, but I did prove it with Cody and Marty without proving it because I, I knew what they were when I hired both. I hired both of them, and I knew what their disc profile was. And they're the last two employees that I've hired in the sales position. I mean, the management all hired everybody else. Now that I have a system, now here's what's great. Here's what's great about the system. I used to want Cody to, to do it. Now I can give it to John. His profile is not a salesman, John, my general manager, which is perfect. His profile fits a general manager profile to a T, which is great because he, he fits his profile, and I love that. Well, now I can have him interview sales guys. I don't have to have Cody do it because they have to fit the profile. And if they don't, we just tell John we're not hiring that dude. He's a production guy, you know, or he's a shop guy. That's what this comes out to be in. So it's that system. Um, if you want to know more about that, go ahead and go on Messenger and let me know. And I will, I'll give you the, the tips and tools on how to do DISC and give you, uh, you know, the exact profiles. I'm, I'm not going into DISC training here, but it is awesome to know. And I'll give you a little hint. It starts with a D. The D profile is part of the big equation for salespeople. And then I'll give you another hint. Call center people, S. You want S's. And so guys that are out there just doing analytical inspections, you want C's. Now we're not talking about sales. We're just talking about inspections. Those are C's. <sighs> I's. An I, that is somebody that's got a little goofball in them that wants to get off and do, do and have a beer or two and discuss, he's the guy everybody likes. That doesn't mean he's not good at the other stuff, but his predominant personality is, I'm getting the work done, depending on what he is, I'm getting the work done, and then let's go parte. I'm a DI. I'm very serious about my, I'm more D than I am I. I'm very direct. I'm not afraid to take a fight on, that's a D. And that's not good if you don't know how to talk to people. So anyway, I'm getting into DISC, and so I can do another podcast on DISC, but that's a little tip. If you can go look at DISC yourself. I think there's some free anal analytics out there for DISC, you know, but uh, uh, I do have that profile, and, and it's really cool to be diving into my company. We'll be doing DISC on all the best guys we have and girls and finding out what each position is what we know it is and their profiles to be hiring to that. So guys, that is our time today. Thank you so much for coming out with Outside the Business Box. Um, please, if you want to talk to me about, you know, working with me one-on-one -on -one or start group coaching with me, um, I still don't have any group coaching uh, clients at this point. Everybody that has contacted me, we've turned into one-on-ones, but um, uh, please feel free to contact me. I, I do actually have a couple openings, uh, and it'd be nice to talk to anybody. And it, you don't have to be a chimney company. Uh, I help uh, lots of other businesses. I know I've got a few listeners that are not in the chimney industry. So give me a ring. Go on Facebook and message me, and let's uh, set up a discovery session chat. So, guys, that is my time.